Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Norville. This edition stops stories. Agricultural leaders in partnership with the Taiwanese Embassy to capitalize on the newly initiated import substitution project. The curtains come down on the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority's inaugural port showcase. The Regional Technical Vocational Education and Training Leadership Development Program comes to an end. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. In a move to forge a closer relationship with the community and consumers at large, agricultural leaders in partnership with the Taiwanese Embassy has initiated a series of events which will serve to build interest in our locally produced food, the people who grow them and the needs of the consumers who buy our food. This forms part of the newly initiated import substitution project, which focuses efforts on increased production of seven cash crops, which is believed to assist in the Ministry of Agriculture's strategy to reduce the national food import bill. We hear more about this initiative from Amanda Faye Clark. The farmer's market, embracing the ongoing ministry's theme of Eat Fresh, Senusha's Best, is a strategic move to meet the general population at the point of need. Apprising consumers of the latest developments within the agri-food sector, farming trends and food safety, providing an outlet where farmers get an opportunity to showcase their produce, and encouraging the consumption of local crops. National Coordinator of the Fruit and Vegetable Import Substitution Project, Adeline Ludovic, says the focus is on generating interest in the main on the seven targeted crops under this project, namely pineapples, cabbages, sweet peppers, tomatoes, lettuce, watermelon, and cantaloupe and honeydew. So these crops are crops that farmers have been producing for a long time in Sanusha, and the farmers have the technical savvy of how to, of production of these crops. So it's crops that we have deemed important, traditional crops, if you will, and also crops that they have the ability to produce. The, However, right now we do have issues that all of these crops, we don't have full-time production, as in the consistency in supply is an issue, where um, we have times of the year, due to our open field agriculture and also the different methods used by the farmers, um, production is in short supply. And um, most unfortunately, it coincides with the tourist season when um, the demand is at the highest. So through that project, we intend to um, introduce new, new technology that will allow the farmers to produce year-round. Last week's farmers market held in Roseau was the project's third hosting. Ms. Yudovic says although it is early days yet, the initiative is gaining momentum. Our aim is to have one farmer market per month, but at the rate we're going now, some of the places we've had farmers market like um, Miku for example, they are asking us to have a next farmer market. So it's so successful that farmers um, on their own plan to have their own farmers market. So that's a very good um, indicator that the farmers market is working. There are eight agricultural regions in St. Lucia. And as Ms. Yudovic explains, the strategy is to hold at least one event in each region, thereby increasing the chances of interaction between the community and farmers and the penetration of messages on the socio-economic benefits of buying and consuming locally grown foods, among others. We have had many engagements with the different stakeholders. We have had trainings for the extension officers because the extension officers are a very vital part of this project. They will be our executing arm of the project. Um, we have had engagements to the different ministries for information gathering. Um, we have had um, meetings with the different chefs, the different buyers, the purchasers, the local purchasers as well for our supermarkets. And um, currently we are engaging in our farmer training program where 100 farmers are being trained island-wide as we speak in the new technology. The Agriculture Ministry continues to interface with its stakeholders on improved sustainable actions to encourage farming livelihoods as a means for growing the subsector. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Ficklock reporting. The historic CARICOM India Summit level meeting held on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly saw India's Prime Minister, the Honorable Narendra Modi, meeting with CARICOM leaders in the regional format for the first time. The meeting highlighted the intensifying and deepening relations between India and partner countries of the Caribbean, not only in the bilateral but also in the regional context. Prime Minister Modi reiterated India's firm commitment to strengthen its political, economic and cultural engagement with CARICOM. 
Following this meeting, Prime Minister Modi announced a U.S. $14 million grant for community development projects in the CARICOM and another $150 million line of credit for solar, renewable energy and climate change related projects. The Prime Minister expressed his condolences on the destruction caused by Hurricane Dorian in the region and the worst hit island of Bahamas, to which India has provided immediate financial assistance of U.S. $1 million. The Indian side also expressed support to specialized capacity building courses, training and deputation of Indian experts based on the needs and requirements of the CARICOM countries. He invited a parliamentary delegation from CARICOM to visit India in the near future. CARICOM leaders welcomed the initiatives proposed by the Prime Minister to strengthen engagement and cooperation between the two sides and reassured full support from their respective governments. It was decided to set up a joint task force to expeditiously look into possible areas of cooperation and identify the way forward. The United Nations Development Program, UNDP, held a project closing workshop. UNDP's Japan-Caribbean Climate Change Partnership project was launched in 2016. The climate change adaptation-themed projects were implemented in eight Caribbean countries and included more than 35 community-based projects. The Regional Climate Action Project has directly benefited over 200,000 people. We hear more from Anisia Antoine. The United Nations Development Program's Japan-Caribbean Climate Change Partnership closed out the four-year project with a three-day workshop and a wrap-up event. The Climate Change Resilience Project was launched in 2016 through partnerships with governments, civil society organizations, regional agencies and communities across eight Caribbean countries with funding from the government of Japan. Small island developing states in the Caribbean region are vulnerable to natural disasters, often triggered by climate change. The government of Japan recognized the necessity for improving the region's resilience, so that the JCCP was formulated to tackle this climate change issue. UNDP's JCCCP implemented more than 35 community-based projects. These concentrated on water resources management, climate smart agriculture, climate resilient infrastructure, renewable energy and energy efficiency. The overall objective was to improve the region's focus on implementing measures for climate change resilience through collective efforts, plans and actions designed to adapt for the long term. It can be seen that JCCTP has facilitated several forward steps within our region to advance climate action. These were possible only through the support and commitment of the national stakeholders and community beneficiaries who were the drivers of these processes. This reminds us that we each have a contribution to make and we are stronger when we work together for the collective building of resilience in our countries and in this great region. The final day's main event featured an official presentation of the project's results. One of the highlights of the presentation was sharing the fact that the project exceeded project targets and expectations in key areas. I would like to thank all the beneficiaries, stakeholders, government partners, government of Japan, and the JCCP team for all the work that you have done, all the support and everything that you have provided. I think this has been a tremendous project and I continue to see impacts every day we are putting sustainability, sustainability plans in place, not only as a project, but on every project. Over 200,000 individuals directly benefited from the UNDP's JCCP Climate Resilience Project activities in the region. The project has come to a close, but the knowledge, infrastructure and the project elements that were put in place will carry on through the various stakeholders. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Sendusha Air and Seaports Authority Slaswa officially closed curtains on its inaugural port showcase on September 25, 2019 at the Harbour Club Hotel official home of Slaswa Port Showcase. Under the theme, the Promenade of Port Connectivity, this event was the first of its kind for Slaswa, St. Lucia and the region. 
The historic event aimed to promote community, connectivity, convergence, build relationships with consumers, partners and stakeholders within the air and seaport community and inspire students and aspiring entrepreneurs to pursue air and seaport related careers and avenues. Port Showcase saw enlightening panel discussions with 15 featured speakers, ranging from tourism specialists, industry executives, management specialists, and aviation industry leaders, who brought talks that extended from St. Lucia's cruise tourism industry, creating a safer environment, operating a multi-use port, air cargo services, and master planning of the new Hiranora International Airport. During his closing address, General Manager at SLASPA, Darren Snack, expressed appreciation to stakeholders, partners, sponsors and employees of SLASPA for their commitment in realizing the success of the event. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development recently hosted UNESCO's International Center for Technical and Vocational Education and Training for Regional Technical Vocational Education and Training Leadership Development Program. The activity is being conducted in collaboration with the UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean and the National Commission for UNESCO. The program is primarily geared towards enhancing the capacity of mid- to senior-level TVET professionals as TVET leaders and the change agents with a systematic understanding and a strong focus on the regional context. Head of the TVET unit in St. Lucia, Colvis Samuels, highlighted the importance of developing the human resource. He indicated that St. Lucia's national TVET policy was recently approved. He explained it is now time to enact these policies. If you look at the, the reading material at UNESCO centers, you'll realize that they did some reviews um, in different countries around the world leading towards, I, I assume, the development of policies. Um, and that is key in terms of, of our management or leadership of our system. Um, we also need to really and truly come together as a group in the region. The collaboration has not been as good as it should be, especially since our regional body, the Caribbean Association of National Train Authorities, has not been functioning the way it should. That was the more or less the glue that has been keeping us together. So what I would like is that coming out of this particular meeting, that we could develop the synergies, the collaboration, the links um, to, to ensure that we do um, what we can to move the region forward. The TVET Leadership Development Program is expected to fulfill several purposes, including developing TVET leaders in the region with improved understanding of TVET leadership at a systematic and regional level. It is also expected to tackle the TVET leadership and change agent bottleneck by honing participants' leadership skill set, vision, knowledge and skills to lead their institutions to a next advanced step of development and strengthening intra-regional networking and facilitating the exchange of good practices. Education Program Specialist for UNESCO, Santiago, Ramen Iriat, indicated that the challenges faced by the Caribbean are not unique as Latin American countries face similar challenges. He explained that this was a great opportunity to share experiences and make headway on the agenda. UNESCO Univoc International Center for TVETS Program Specialist Miki Nozawa explained that with the global changes and technological advancement, human capacity must be constantly improved so as to keep up with the changes. 
And uh, this is in this uh, context that um, uh, UNESCO and UVOCA decided to initiate uh, this uh, series of uh, uh, Tibet leadership programs. So it started in 2016. And, um, uh, but this is the very first time that uh, we, we hold in the Caribbean and, and, and we are very, very honored to be part of uh, this as well. The UNESCO UNOVAC International Center for Technical and Vocational Education and Training is one of seven UNESCO institutes and centers working in the field of education. The leadership development program culminated on Friday, 27 September 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle au Quayol. Climat la terre can change. Exactly affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros de l'eau éclaire la pente de l'eau. Car des tous les animaux et plein. Quand la mer qui a venu plus chaud, il y a tué place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière se pressent qui a quitté l'un côté et allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué un petit tissu gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé fait tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qui nous baisser à sous quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre à venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à sous quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, Kaboulé, gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre à venir, on a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le monde, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause des changements du climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous ne pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Batik Kainou pour abattre des dommages en temps cyclone et godlo. Construit un canal pour de l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal là par les ordi. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout notre cétlicien. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Quayol. Monsieur, Madame, Département et les responsabilités pour l'information du gouvernement de la GIS, Assemblée de Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN, Capozoto, Nouvelle à Quayol. Capozoto, Primus Hutchinson. Comme bateau manoir de service santé de l'Amérique, quand tu es en bout de service de l'Amérique, PIA, plus passé, il y a 1 000 personnes qui ont eu diverses maladies, trouvé des traitements. Les gens qui sont dans tous les quatre coins du pays, trouvé des enceintes de culture nationale, l'hôpital Owen King et Asso Manoir même, pour recevoir des traitements pour diverses maladies et aussi l'opération de la cérémonie. Afin de faire une cérémonie, pour commencer l'opération, mais pour passer, le commandant Ryan Dibold note que le monsieur est pour improuver la santé publique, pour renforcer la sécurité et augmenter la prospérité. Commandant Dibold a ajouté que le service-là pour cette ici, c'est une manifestation du pays de l'Amérique pour nous permettre d'assister avec un des autres pays comme cette ici, qui n'a pas besoin d'assistance et d'aide en face de la santé. Le secrétaire permanent, le ministère des Affaires de Santé, Félix Saint Hill, remercie le gouvernement de l'Amérique pour déguer ce service-là pour le peuple de Il Il remarque que, comme cette ici, il a espéré une grande transformation de services de santé, assistance en façon manoir de santé de l'Amérique, qui a une certaine pour un peu de temps pour venir. Malgré le service de la coûte, pour les autres, c'est le Saint Hill qui a conseillé cette liste pour prendre tout l'avantage à diverses services de la par des services là avélables. Manoir de services de santé de l'Amérique a commencé l'opération mercredi le 25 septembre et qui a bout lundi le 3 septembre. Durant l'opération en PIA, le personnel de santé, cette liste, tu as collaboré et puis non, c'est le docteur Méritien, pardon, tu as conduit le service de la en PIA. En parlant de ça, le gouvernement cette ci a continué à se chimer pour tenir le commitment pour procurer plus de services de service santé pour les citoyens cette ci à de façon que tu es plus capable de recevoir. Le premier ministre cette ci honorable Alain Chasney, qui est assis et puis le consultant des assurances pour la santé nationale Hot Bank Mondial, a suivi une grande consultation en effort pour assister cette liste pour implémenter un projet de assurance nationale pour les citoyens pays. Ça a fait en continuation le gouvernement pour renforcer le projet de service de santé en pays cette liste. Le plan, c'est pour voir qu'en finissant le projet, les citoyens qui ne peuvent 
ek yo ki pli ba a sou balans ekonomik pe ya ka yo registre an ba program sa la. Program la katou ve finanse pa yon 20 milyon dolar meritye an fason kredi pa yon asosyasyon internasyonal de devlopman. Premier ministre Lise Onewab Alain Chasne eksplike gouvèdman ka travay serviyeman pou e servis santé sa la avelab pou tout set lisye. Me e ka yi kon lave la men ek swe a te si lani yon l'hôpital ek pep pe ya pas a touve servis santé. Premier ministre Chasne ki te ansem epi les ofisye Lilyo Iwop an l'hôpital Owen King wisetman di ki Iwop ek bak mondial Jaka travay epi set li si a link de asistans teknikal. Si lo premi nis la, a ba pogom sa la, kouvedman ka y kontune pou peye dokte ek nos ek tout itilite. Alo, asyons la ka y kouve prinsipalman visitasyon pou dokte privé, wye med ek lot nesesite. Plan se pou ni yon servis asyons pou wijon ka web la, a ba yon sel weg. Wye so sa la, pogom asyons de sate nasyonal la ka y amba kondwit pou je de asyons nasyonal peye ya. Sa se, en a isi. Sosyete le dokter a kawibla, ki ka pa ofame l'opuasyon, ka sevi kamra ek limye, te chen yon konfowans etenasyonal di wan finisman si men nan, an kolobwasyon epi asosyasyon des afe medikal ek sate dan, an set li si, aso manye, pou kondwi kalite l'opuasyon sa la an peye ya. Sistem l'opuasyon sa la, se yon ki ka vini twe popile an se tan sa la, kote dokter, pa ka koupe enbe fan la che kon ki te ka fet avan, yo ni ka fe anti flanjay, ki trop pli an benefis ni dokte e moun ki ni malad, enbe moun ki malad ou si. Nande sa la, atansyon an se asou se peyi kawib la, e ou si se peyi Dutch, Fransi ek Espanyol. Kalite le pou asyon sa la, se yon ki twe avanse an degwe teknoloji, ek se pou wezo sa la, atansyon an asou wijon, wijon kawib la, ou fe pli avelab. Ko Frans la te komanse li 26 septem ek kay bout li 28 di wan ta sa la sistem l'opwasyon ka fet an l'hôpital Saint Jude kote le dokte hod CPI OSS la ki ka pa ofame l'opwasyon touve etwenman hod le go grek an wijon an mem ek pe etenasyonal. Ko Frans la ka kontine an hotel Begans kote adres ka fet pa ale representatif wijonal ek etenasyonal. Ek se konsa nou atro bout nouvel la jodi an mese medam. Mou ka remesi ou tan pou gade, pou avoy yon invitasyon pou chene pi mou anko, si de konseve la vi, le mou ka y pou zot wou lot nouvel an koyol. Te mou souti ou tout moun, an bon fin de sou an semen. Mesi apil primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Winds will be blowing from between the east, northeast and east, southeast near 14 miles per hour or 22 kilometers per hour, becoming lighter at times. A tropical wave just to the east of the Lesser Antilles is expected to cause some cloudy periods with showers over the islands during the forecast period. Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. At 11 a.m. today, the center of Hurricane Lorenzo was located near latitude 19.4 degrees north, longitude 42.9 degrees west. Lorenzo is moving toward the north-northwest near 14 miles per hour or 22 kilometers per hour and this general motion is forecast to continue. A turn toward the north is expected tonight or on Saturday followed by a turn toward the north-northeast on Sunday. Maximum sustained winds are near 140 miles per hour or 22 kilometers per hour with higher gusts. Lorenzo is a category 4 hurricane. Some fluctuations in strength are possible today and slow weakening is forecast to begin by the weekend. Lorenzo is a large hurricane. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 45 miles or 75 kilometers from the center and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 265 miles or 425 kilometers. Hurricane Lorenzo is expected to remain over the central Atlantic Ocean well east of the Lesser Antilles during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 2.52 p.m. and will be low again at 8.24 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 3.59 p.m. and will be low again at 9.51 p.m. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves 4 to 7 feet or 1.2 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.53 a.m. 
That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.